I want to thank your pastor, Pastor Brian. He is a gracious man of God and how I thank him for this opportunity. And I thank each of you as a congregation for allowing me to come back and worship with you on this glorious day. Uh, I, my daughter Patrice is here with me. She uh, stood up earlier. I was glad that she did. <laughs> <laughs> she's my ride or die it's, you know whenever I have somewhere to go she's right there willing to go with me so I thank God for her as well as our daughter Adrian who's getting ready to travel around the world Bosnia Rome and all of that good stuff and my husband Rollin who is teaching Sunday school class at Hartford Memorial Baptist Church it's a class that we share so I want to before we get started I want to make you aware of the book that I published last year. It's called We Are Overcomers. And uh, Patrice and I will be here after service if you're interested. It is a weekly devotional. It uh, actually has a lot of my encounters with the Lord in it, as well as from other folks. So please come by if you're interested. Let us pray. Oh, Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Our text today has already been read, but if you will indulge me, I would like to read it again. Our, our theme is holding on to hope. Holding on to hope. Uh, I would ask that you would please stand if you are able. And I'm going to quickly read this again. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of God, you may be seated. Let me get this in the right position here. I think that's, I think that'll work. More than any time in history, humankind faces a crossroads. One path leads to despair and utter hopelessness, the other to total extinction. Let us pray that we have the wisdom to choose correctly. Now, this is a quote by Willie Allen, who about hopelessness and either path in this scenario leads to destruction, extinction, hopelessness. This past week, we saw the Department of Justice take 11 boxes of classified top secret information from our former president. You know, it appears that some of these things may have included nuclear weapon type information. We may have just dodged a bullet and not even know it. How can we hold on to hope in these unprecedented times? Some people have lost hope already in our democracy and in us being able to keep our way of life. Losing hope. Beloved, there is no worse feeling than the feeling of losing hope. 
when you and I lose hope, it can be like driving in a fog where you can't see where you're going. You don't know where, which way, how you're going to end up. Hope is so important to the human condition that God calls it the anchor of the soul. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. Without hope, we can enter a darkness called the dark night of the soul that becomes in, in, in able, does not enable us to penetrate it. But one thing about the darkness is that the small this amount of light will make it disappear. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He is the only source that we can depend upon to shine light in our darkness. He is the only one who can help us locate the hope that we may have lost and the hope that we must hold on to. Beloved, I want to encourage you today to hold on to hope. I want to encourage you to be that little light in the darkness that will shine in the darkness no matter what. It can be challenging at times. Today, darkness, evil seems to be winning. And the past two and a half years, so much sickness, so much death, just when we thought we were done with COVID, we realized we're still wearing masks. We're still social distances. It is still with us. And now we have something called monkey pox that seems to be increasing. These diseases and others are taking the lives of so many that we know and love. And surprisingly, in the city of Detroit, the last number that I checked, only 28% of us were vaccinated against COVID. Very hard to believe. So we've been in this season where we couldn't visit our loved ones if they had COVID. We couldn't honor them when they died in the way that we wanted to. We have been in this season of death and sickness and uncertainty. And it does not feel good, even if we're coming out of it a little bit. And so we have been tempted oftentimes to slip into despair, depression, and even hopelessness. Nobody here, I'm sure. But if we are honest with ourselves, we all have gone there with the mass shootings in, in uh, schools, in grocery stores, and people having assault weapons that should never be on the street. And so we find ourselves in uh, extreme heat and floods, and this is the world that we're living in right now. So who wouldn't be depressed sometimes? Our spirits are often low. Our faces are downcast. Sleep is disturbed. And many tears sometimes can fall. Hopeless. It challenges us who profess to be Christians to hold on to hope. And what does it really mean to live as a Christian in this unprecedented season of so much suffering, despair, loneliness, hatred? and grief. Where are we to turn when we fall into these feelings of hopelessness? What does the Bible say about this situation and about us? Is there a word from the Lord? There is. If we look in this book of Romans, it's really pretty hard on us. And the first three chapters take a very dim view of human nature. And rightly so, because we all know that no one of us is righteous. I don't care how big your Bible is, how many times you come to church. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. None of us is righteous but God. We're all guilty of small things and some even big. It's a quite a long list, but just 
when we thought everything was hopeless, Paul says, but now the righteousness of God has been manifested. <laughs> Praise God. God's righteousness was demonstrated through his judgment poured out on Christ, and it is available as a credit to us, all who believe. Hallelujah. Praise God for Jesus. This righteousness comes from God through faith in Christ to all who believe. That would be us. Therefore, we must, we have to, absolutely. If nobody else holds on to her, uh, hope, we have to as Christians because we believe. Amen? So chapter four ends by saying, Christ was delivered over because of our transgressions, and he was raised because of our justification. He died because of our sin, and he was raised because of our justification. Now, justification is simply the act of God declaring men and women free from guilt and acceptable to him. The good news is that if you are a believer, you have been declared not guilty by God, and your sin and your debt has been paid in full. Thank God for Jesus. So our scripture today, beginning in chapter 5, is really about the blessings of justification. As Christians, we are blessed. We are blessed. We need to walk like we are blessed. We need to praise like we are blessed. To understand our text today, it helps to keep in mind the two-sided reality of the Christian life. On the one hand, we are complete in Christ. Our acceptance with him is secure. On the other hand, we are growing in Christ. That's why we come to church. That's why we study our Bible. We are growing to be more like him, more loving and more kind. And Paul says, when I would do right, I do wrong. So in other words, when I would eat that salad, instead I go for the burgers and fries and the pizza, just for good measure, have a slice of pizza and maybe chocolate cake on top. <laughs> so we feel both the presence of Christ and the pressure of sin. So in other words, we enjoy the peace that, that comes from being made right with God. But we still face these daily problems, these challenges, these trials that come to help us to grow. And if we remember these two sides of the Christian life, we will not grow discouraged uh, as we face these temptations and problems that sometimes can seem insurmountable. Instead, we will learn to depend on the power that is available to us from Christ who lives in us by the Holy Spirit. And if you live long enough, you will learn to hold on to hope. What do we say? This too shall pass. I don't care how good it is. I don't care how bad it is. This too shall pass. And we have lived long enough, because I'm looking at faces, to <laughs> we all in this together, right? We have lived long enough to know that even this shall also pass. So why should we choose hope? But well, Chris Reeves said, once you choose hope, anything is possible. We choose hope because, number one, we have peace with God. Have you ever thought about the significance of that? Remember that none is righteous of the sins that we have committed. Uh, everything in the list, some of us have committed almost everything on the list. But the truth be told, uh, all of us have committed some kind of sin. And if we say we haven't, then we're lying, right? What are they saying? The truth is not in you. <laughs> You're lying, and that also is a sin. So we did really, we deserve death and wrath for our sins, and yet God gave us peace. What a mighty God we serve. How did he do it? Christ's sacrifice fully satisfied the wrath of God. So as I said, we're all paid up. 
we have been fully reconciled to God and we never have to worry about it again. This peace that comes through Jesus. You know that peace that I'm talking about. You know that peace that surpasses all understanding. You know that peace when your world seems to be crumbling and yet you walk. You walk in authority because you know that you are a child of God. That peace. We choose hope number two because we have access to grace through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. Paul says, we believers, we now stand in the place of highest privilege. And, and this, this is because God has declared us not only not guilty, but he has drawn us close to himself. So we're, no, we're not his enemies. We have become his friends. And even more so than that, we are his children. We need to walk in that. We have this relationship with the almighty God and no one has to come. No one but Jesus represents us to God. We have it like that. I want you to imagine a, a beautiful treasure chest a beautiful treasure chest, and you know that it's filled with the most valuable possession. But I'm not talking about diamonds. I'm not talking about rubies and sapphires. I'm talking about God's amazing grace. That is the most prized possession that any of us have. And in order to open this treasure chest, you have to have a key. And what is that key? That key is Jesus. You have to have that key. Jesus provides us access to it. And Jesus is our access into grace because he atoned for our sins. We are accepted by God. So we choose hope because number three, we have a sure hope of the glory of God. Hope is an opinion or belief, not uh, amount into certainty, but grounded on substantial evidence, according to Webster's Dictionary. We sometimes think of hope as like, I hope uh, it doesn't rain today, or I, I hope I, I, I get that promotion, or I hope she likes me as much as I like her. <laughs> that hope, that, that's a, a weak kind of hope that we we're familiar with, but we have to realize that hope and faith go together. And we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So we rejoice in the hope of God's glory. Nothing, beloved, can separate us from the love of God. That ought to shout you right, right there. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And, and, and so the spirit himself uh, testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then that means that we are also heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. So our problem is we want all the glory. <laughs> we don't want the suffering. It's kind of like, uh, I want that promotion, but I don't really want to work for it. So when Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then we also will be revealed with him in glory. Imagine that. Imagine your glorious body now of what that might look like. Jesus said, the glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one in them, you in me, that they may be perfected in unity so that the world may know that you sent me and love them, even as you have loved me. We've been united with him and our justification by faith in grace, in, in grace lets us exalt or boast that our hope is one day we'll be glorified with him. And that is the good news. We rejoice in the hope of God's glory. So hold on to hope. Things are not gonna always be this way. One day we will be glorified with Christ. 
But until then, Dr. King says, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. I'm holding on to hope. I'm holding on. And finally, we choose hope because we have joy in tribulation, knowing that they are for our good. And not only this, but we, we exalt in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance and perseverance, proven character and character hope. So, so we rejoice in our future hope, but we also rejoice in our present trials. At this point, you might be saying, what? <laughs> I was with you until you said to rejoice in the trials. But you know what the Bible teaches us to persevere in our faith. And that gives us character, which is translated to experience. As we walk through our trials day by day, we experience the power and the faithfulness of God. And this in turn focuses hope on our future glory when we will walk with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the idea is that these tribulations, these trials, uh, such as opposition and persecution that we face almost daily, sickness, unemployment, hunger, all of this stuff, force us to wait on God. When I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2009, and the oncologist said to me, uh, Mrs. Henderson, it's going to take about a year to get through this. And then my ego kicked in and I said, no, it's not going to take me a year. Well, it took a year. And so during this time, uh, one of the mothers of the church had given me a prayer to pray she said, baby, I want you to pray this prayer every day at 12 o'clock, facing the sun. Every day, 12 o'clock noon, I prayed that prayer. My Sunday school, my church members prayed for me. I was in constant prayer and meditation. And I can recall one day the chemo had me so weak, my head was spinning. I couldn't hold my head up. I was crying out to the Lord, Lord God, why? I'm your servant. I've been on this battlefield a long time. Lord, why? I didn't see any value in the suffering. I was ready to say, you, you want to take me now? Just take me, Lord, because I, I don't know if I can handle any more of this. One of my professors said, don't miss the blessing in this. And when you're going through, sometimes you can't see the blessing. But there was a blessing in that suffering because I came out of it a much better person than when I went into it. And I'm here to testify. God is good. He hears our prayers. And the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So that was in 2010. And here I am in 2022. Isn't God good? I know God is good. And as folks used to say, I know God for myself. <laughs> not my parents, not my grandparents. I know God for myself. So that's why I'm holding on to hope. Paul tells us that in the future, we, we become. But in, until, then, until then, we must overcome. And that means that we, we must experience difficulties that help us to grow. If everything was easy, we would never grow. What is the point? It's all good. We, you know, what, what we don't realize, and nobody tells you this, and Patrice, if you, we didn't tell you, I'm sorry, but I'm telling you now. <laughs> Life is hard. You know, we think it's, it's supposed to be just a free ride on and on. But the reality is that life can be hard. And once you accept that and know that uh, God is with you and you deepen your trust in God, you can get through anything. And we remember that Jesus said in this life, we will have what? Trials and tribulations. But see, we don't want to believe that. We really don't. We want to believe the good 
you know, Jesus is the light of the world, but trials and tribulations, we, we know it, but we don't really want to accept that. People that know me know that I'm a person that does not like waiting. <laughs> Somebody else say amen, amen. But I hold on to the scripture that says for momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. When we wait, we see God working on our behalf in his time, and this builds our hope when we wait on him. And hope does not disappoint us because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts. The Holy Spirit has been given to us. And the reason hope does not disappoint us is because it rests on the love of God, which has been poured out through the Holy Spirit. So whatever happens to me, I know that God loves me. Whether I lose, whether I live or die, I live in Christ and I die in Christ. That's just me. I'm holding on to hope. And, and just look at how much he loves us. And I'm going to uh, move, rush on through this. That while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. And, 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 and when you think about that, we weren't worthy. We didn't do anything to, to, to earn this. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, we were helpless. And, and more than that, we were unfit, unclean, undesirable. Who would want to love someone like that? And some people say, I can't join the church right now because you see, I'm a, a sinner. Well, that is a time when you need to be running to church to join a good church like this. Don't wait until you get everything right. You never will get it all right. While we were yet sinners, while we were out in the street and doing things that we wouldn't be proud of, Christ still loves us. And I'm speaking for all of us. While we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. He didn't come to save the righteous, not a righteous. He came to save the sinners. And this is why, my beloved, our hope is so certain. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I'm holding on to hope. I'm holding on to hope. These are amazing words. God sent Jesus Christ to die for us, not because we were good enough, not because we were so holy, but because he loved us. So whenever you feel uncertain about God's love for you, remember he loved you even when you turned against him. If God loved you then when you were lost, how much more will he love you now, now that you're on this path with him? And as Paul states clearly in 1 Corinthians, faith, hope, and love are all at the heart of the Christian life. Our relationship with God begins with faith which helps us realize that we are delivered from our past by Christ's death. God forgives us. And what, is, what does that say to us? Then we should forgive one another. And we should even forgive ourselves. When we were young, and, we, and I won't go down that path, but we should forgive ourselves for past sins. Amen. So I'm holding on to hope. What are you holding on to today? Is it your family? Is it your friends? Is it your bank account? What are you holding on to? Is it your intellect, your education? What, what are you holding on to today? And how is that working for you? What are you holding on to? To today because none of that stuff will save you. But here is the good news. We rejoice in the hope of God's glory. So hold on 
to hope. Things won't always be this way. We don't all, we won't always experience sickness and pain and disappointment. Hold on to hope with confident expectation that one day we will be glorified with him. Lord, help me to hold on. Lord, help me to hold out. Thank you, Lord. I'm holding on God's unchanging hand. I'm holding on to God's unchanging hand. I'm holding on to hope because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean to Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want to say that if you are that person who said, I got to wait till I get it right, don't wait till you get it right. Come now. Come now while you're still able. Come now and put your hand in Jesus' hand. Come now because all of that stuff that the world has to offer is not going to work for you. It's not working for you now, but you don't want to accept that. Come now. The doors of the church are open. I'm tired of holding on to all of this worldly stuff. Money, fame, power. You may be tired of trying to work it out with the world. You never will. <laughs>